we finally got some Pennsylvania glacial gold. What's up, everybody? Matt Hospital, our prospect and geologist here, coming to you today with uh, Glacial Gold Prospecting Basics Part 2. Finally, after three years. <laughs> Sorry about the wait there. Um, I definitely have been meaning to get to this, and now that I got out again here and have put together a little more, we're going to delve into some of these, uh, some of what I think are areas and features to focus on when glacial gold prospecting, as well as going over some of the geologic terms and what they mean when you're reading the geologic maps to help you with understanding that. Um, so we're going to get into it here, but I'd also like to uh, please ask you guys to please like, share, and subscribe this if you and subscribe to the channel if you like this type of content. And also consider looking at my Patreon uh, page, which I'll put a link down in the uh, video description. Um, if you want to get in more in-depth and be able to get into more uh, deep conversations about some of this stuff. And particularly ways that I can help you guys find the gold more so wherever you are. Um, so... We're going to dig into some glacial gold prospect. Okay, so let's start with going over some of the main glacial features that you'll generally see on uh, glacial ge geologic maps. And the one we're looking at right now is available for free. I'll try and post a link in the description, but it's basically glacial deposits of northwestern Pennsylvania. Um and this has been the primary area where I have generally been prospecting uh, since I live near Pittsburgh now. Uh, but so looking at this map, you see obviously a multitude of colors. And I mean, that can be daunting when it comes to figuring out like where would be the best places to prospect. Um, but we'll start with some of the terminology of these various things. And it seems many people who prospect in glacial areas of the Midwest to Pennsylvania and everything know of like the moraines. Um, and you can see these lines here. So like the red is a moraine, the purple is another. These are different moraines from various ages. And the thing is, is with moraines is they would be considered un sorted deposits meaning they are a jumbled mess of everything from silts clays sands cobbles boulders all jumbled together with no sorting whatsoever so honestly they are not necessarily the best to be prospecting directly in um, what you really want to be looking for to prospect in, in glacial areas is what they generally considered consolidated or sorted, uh, sorted formations, which are generally going to be like, they're generally going to be called Cames are one of them. Eskers are another, uh, glacial outwash, beach deposits. All of those are considered sorted, meaning even when the glaciers were there, there was running water, that was sorting the air, sorting the material that was brought down from Canada into basically quasi their stream deposits that were under the glaciers, on top of the glaciers, beside the glaciers, and things like that. So they're akin to modern stream deposits, but they were, they had gold in them brought down by Canada. Um, so the main reason why you want to look for those is that they're already sorted material, meaning the clays and the silts would have been more or less removed and they would have had maybe similar deposition things to what we consider like a natural, like a, a normal placer deposit in a stream. However, they don't all end up in the current streams. Um, glacial outwash is generally going to be within the bottoms of the current stream valleys. And it has generally been my observation that the outwash below, um, outside of the glacial boundaries has actually been quite good to look for glacial gold in. Um, and then if you look in here, so the OL... The light yellow, this light yellow is outwash. 
So this is basically as the glaciers were receding and the meltwater was going out and it was creating outwash of water. Some of these were tremendously destructive with like ice dams breaking and floods of proportions that we can't even comprehend nowadays. Um, the cames, however, are not outwash, but they are sorted deposits. Uh, so cames basically formed within valleys but usually on the sides of the valley because as the glacier was receding you'd have these lobes or branches of the glacier still in the valley being the last to melt and you would have um a stream or a waterway running between the valley wall and half partially on the glacier and that is your cane deposit. And they were usually dropped in the various valleys and they form this like undulating terrain. And I'll show you what that looks like on LIDAR in a couple areas. Um, so glacial outwash and canes are your two primary sort of deposits that you would want to focus on. Particularly where modern streams are cutting both outwash as well as canes, like cutting and eroding into on a cut bank side. To me, that would be a high high area where you would want to prospect. The other types of deposits up here is still marked as kind of outwash, but it's this it's the beach, it's the ancient beach deposits of Lake Erie as it has been receding. Um, so those are generally your three main sort of deposits that you want to hunt for and look. In. And luckily, they do tend to run in the existing bottoms of valleys nowadays, though some do not. Um, and in particular, I'd be wanting to look for like the small side streams going into larger creeks and rivers that have cut these canes and outwash deposits. Um, but, I mean, the outwash stuff, has, to me, has always been good within Ohio as well as uh, Pennsylvania. Um, the canes have been a little harder to figure out, mainly because they're not necessarily in the existing creek bottom exactly. They're usually kind of up on the edge of the valley, forming almost a terrace or bench deposit. Uh, so those are kind of things to keep in mind. Now, just... If you have a modern stream cutting through, say, the unclassified deposits or unsorted deposits like moraines and till, those will still have sorted them, but they will have only concentrated and sorted what they specifically eroded in that valley. Whereas the canes and outwash would have potentially been sorting and working with glacial material for who knows how many possible thousands of years. Um, so I think the streams and creeks and rivers that cut and are cutting into or in the outwash and canes are going to be your best bet for finding glacial gold. Uh, your terminal moraines and your other moraine deposits, because they're not all terminal, meaning at the, the furthest extent, there's multiple moraines deposited throughout, and some of those we'll look at are not the terminal moraines. Um, but moraines and till are just this giant jumble of messed material all mixed together, making it difficult to prospect because really your gold is just going to be scattered everywhere, meaning it's not concentrated enough to probably really find. So, okay, with that whole explanation of a number of glacial features, once again, focus on Canes, outwash, and beach deposits. And you'll see over here on the side, let me go to the side of this. Um, they're usually down here in this. Canes, cane terraces, cane moraines, and eskers. And then outwash, also called valley trains, river terraces, lake deposits, including beaches of the former Lake Erie, uh, former heights of Lake Erie. And you'll see these are generally considered the... the Character of the materials, sand and gravel, as well as bedded sand, gravel, silt, and some clay sometimes. Whereas, till, till is generally silt and clay, 
not very good. You can get erratics, you can get boulders and other things in till, but it's usually not good. And the moraines are also categorized primarily of silt, but they can have a, just be a mess of material. And all all the gravel mines or gravel uh, pits that you see are probably in canes, eskers, or outwash. They're not in moraines nor till. So, okay, let's uh, move on and take a look at some of these features on LIDAR. Okay, so this is actually one of the first stops that we took on our recent trip up to this area. Um, so we actually pulled off and panned the river right here. We're out here now at French Creek uh, near Cochranton. And we are checking out... Um, so French Creek here should be cutting through a came deposit. Uh, big creek though, I'll say that. Bigger than I thought, but we'll check it out here. Hopefully not falling down the hillside and dying. These are kind of like steps cut in actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, nice. Just can't see them. So we'll see what we can find here at French Creek near Cochranton. Um, seems like it should be good since it cuts the came deposit and we're up above the glacial moraine still, but basically right at a came deposit. So we're going to kind of go out to this little spit bar right here first and check there. See what we can find. And in it here, so you have, so that's a, that's a good example of a came terrace. I'm going to insert video once, once I'm done talking here in one second of us panning this area. But then if you go down here, and I kind of wish we would have tried to pan this other creek, but if you see this, this other creek right here and this wide valley, this valley would be considered outwash. And we can actually go and look on the geologic map here. Um, and we would be right... We were like right here looking at the LIDAR. So here's this big cane terrace I was talking about. And you can see within the creek bottom of this smaller creek, you have actually outwash documented with then came deposits along the outsides. Um, so I'm going to have to make it a priority to actually get back to that location and try and also sample pan this smaller stream in the documented outwash and then there's came on both sides so to me that could be a potentially very good spot um i will say panning as you'll see in the video we did not find gold in this location but we took maybe 10 pans and then we had to scoot um and we just sampled a very small area there so it's not going to say much there was definitely glacial gravel there there was nice sized granite cobble which i'll show in the video coming up here um so let's roll into some of that video of at this location, basically a right adjacent in a large creek to a came deposit. Bunch of nice rounded cobble. Uh, can't tell what it's made of yet since it's mainly all covered in stiff. But we're going to find out here. It's a... Uh, yeah, it's beautiful out here, I'll say that. French Creek is gorgeous. Uh, stop number two for the day. And this is basically just public access here, so. And you can see a sign on the road there. So in glacial areas such as like the Midwest, so Illinois, Missouri, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, where you have glacial gold pushed down, some of your good indicators that there's probably that your in glacial material is going to be like these type of rocks right here so these three are definitely a granite granitoid granite type rock and then this is a nice of some sort whereas these other rounded rocks are more so these could be these other rounded rocks could be local um they're sandstone um so these are good indicators of potential gold if you're in a glacial area um because they represent stuff that was definitely pushed down from canada because these are not local there are no granite plutons or batholiths or oh, anything yeah. in the uh in missouri 
Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Western Pennsylvania, I should no say. Uh, New York does have its own local granite, so that might get a little more complicated out there. I have not prospected New York, though. So Those are good indicators, though. And those are some bigger ones there. I've been finding smaller ones. He's got a couple big ones. Okay, so the next location that we went and prospected was an area on a geologic map here that they called a glacial meltwater sluiceway, which to me sounded like a very uh, potentially good target. I hadn't necessarily heard of that terminology before, um, but this specific geologic map had a number of them. This surficial, like glacial geologic map had a number of these denoted here with these blue arrows, if you can see them. And this is the one we were able to check out right here. Um, and basically, yeah, it's a very channelized area where glacial meltwaters cut like through either glacial material or through bedrock and cut a channel um and i was hoping this would potentially have a good bit of exposed bedrock but i later found out going through this document a little more that the depth of overburden to bedrock could be like uh anywhere from like 10 to 40 feet um so no idea how close we were to bedrock here um it was definitely lighter on the black sands than I was hoping for, but they were chunkier, which was interesting. Um, but we did not find gold in this location, though once again, there was plenty of indicators of nice glacial cobble, granite, and other stuff. Um, and there is probably gold around. I'm just not quite sure where it would have concentrated since the water was so channelized right through there. Um we did not get to check out this secondary location here, um, but we can take a look at it on the LIDAR here next. Um, so this is basically what it looks like in the LIDAR, and it's very, you can tell it's, it, it, it's channelized um, and a deep valley, and you can kind of denote, you can kind of find these somewhat on the geologic, or on the LIDAR maps by how in size the valley is compared to the surroundings like this one here is very in size and this one is and then there's a couple others up this way some of this might have been um but they're basically yeah deeply in size valleys that all the glacial meltwater went through and carved out uh which i was hoping to be a good target we did not find gold but now let's we're gonna move on to the uh video some video of us panning this area even though we didn't find gold it was an interesting area okay so we are at a what's marked as a glacial outwash sluice way on the uh, geologic maps uh, water's deeper than i thought it'd be for how small the creek is but uh we're gonna try and get a pan out of here and start seeing what the material looks like uh i'm hopeful i've never got to prospect one of these potential locations and we'll have a second to check out here hopefully two uh, it was a little hard to get down to as it was uh, jungle, multiplural rose jungle, basically. But let's, uh, let's try and get a pan out of here. It's some big rocks, I'll say that. We'll see what we can get out of it. You panning with the shovel? I am. Nice. I just want to see what this sand looks like. Well, that's a giant granite rock there. This one here. Yes, it is. That's granite. That's big. That's big. That's a big granite cobble. That's interesting because most of the other places I haven't seen anything near that size. Wasn't much material. That was not brought in either. I mean, it was brought in by the glaciers. I don't think that was brought in by me. Yeah, my top layer of, of loose sand has some good black sand on it. Huh. Yeah, this is going to be interesting material. Yeah. That. If I can get anything out of it. <laughs> Woo! That water's chilly. So, more granite. So there's nice big granite here. Uh, 
Another piece of granite. Pan it out, see what we get. Fingers crossed. A little bit of garnet and black sands and stuff. I mean, that wasn't, I didn't get the best pan. I had a hard time getting into anything because the rocks are so big. Okay, and then so our last stop of the day here is uh, also the one where we found gold, actually. It needs more exploration. Found, I don't know, three a flake and two specks in one pan and then another color and then in the another pan from like the sameless spot um, but we were basically right in here in glacial outwash um it was a little distance below some nice cane deposits as well as a prominent moraine um these the light blue and light purple and tan they're kind of I think they're moraines is what they're documented as. Um, but they're also rather discontinuous, meaning they don't cover the whole area extensively and they're not very deep or anything. Uh, so the main prominent moraine that actually shows up well on the LIDAR is this red one over here. And in addition, it has the canes right around it and everything, too. Uh, and I've generally, for some reason, had better luck in outwash kind of below outside of prominent terminal moraines or prominent moraines. Uh, probably because the material has been further sorted well, sorted as the meltwater got came through those uh, moraine areas and everything as well as it's also concentrating the cane deposits probably more which are already a sorted deposit um, so we're going to take a look at this spot right here in the lidar and then we're also going to take a look at these large cane deposits off to the west that are they're, you can spot them on the LIDAR pretty well, and I think they deserve more exploration around that area, too, around these large caves and everything. Just did not have time this day. Luckily, we found gold here, so I think this general area I want to explore more. Um, for, you, for those of you who stuck around this long, this is Venango County. Um, and this particular creek where we did find some small gold is uh, it was Sandy Creek. Um, which is a public waterway, so as long as you access via the bridges and everything, you're good to pan and prospect. Uh, so, for those of you who stuck around this long, there's your tidbit, uh, and we found gold here. So, let's look at the LiDAR now of it. So, we were about right in here, panning behind some big boulders. I think big glacial boulders is where we found some of the gold. Um, so that area would warrant more panning to figure some stuff out. Uh, some of this stuff up in the hillsides is either gravel or coal. I'm not sure what they were digging for, but it's not gold, obviously, in western Pennsylvania. Um, but this is, all, this is all outwash deposits down through here within the main creek channel. All the way to the Allegheny River, basically, which I still want to pan around there, too. I want to do a lot of panning, just not enough time. Um, and then as we go up creek here, we start to get into the moraine, which you can kind of see is this weird uh, rough. This rough area is a big moraine that was dropped by a glacial advance as it stopped. Um and then in the creek valley itself, if you see these like weird mounds and stuff down in the creek valley itself, these are cane deposits. 
And I think they also run up this creek valley here into that moraine, which would be interesting to pan. And you can see some more came deposits through here. Um, but all this looks pretty promising. Um, I got to do more research on exactly where I can get into pan around those came locations, but I would like to. Um, these circles that you see here, I believe, are from iron furnaces, coke furnaces back in the day. Uh, so they're not anything related to glacial or anything. They're man-made. Uh, but this, this little bench here could also be a came deposit, but this right in here definitely is. Uh, so this area warrants more exploration. The valley also narrows down significantly right here to the point where the creek is the only thing in the bottom. I'd like to take a look at that. Um, but yeah, so that's what this area looks like under LIDAR. And let's go see some video of it. And some of the gold. If you can see the gold. Woo! We finally got some Pennsylvania glacial gold. After what's, what location is this? What stop? It's gotta be our fifth or sixth. I think it's at least our fifth stop. At least. None of the others have produced anything. All the material, even this spot, the material seemed damn near the same. Um, this is uh, Sandy Creek. Sandy Creek right at this bridge. Not on bedrock. We're just up in loose silverbird and stuff. And uh, we finally got some gold. Finally. Here, let me... Uh... And it's definitely not just a single piece either. No? Uh-uh. So you set, you set a shot behind that big boulder. And that's where you got it. I see three colors. That was your second pan of that rock. Though. No, this is first pan here. Oh, okay. I don't know if you can oh, see boy. this. There's three colors there i'm gonna have to i'll get my there she goes yep you got a piece it's can you even see it with your eyes it's smaller than the other one jesus it's there though it's there i don't know if you can see that but it's right there tip of my finger there might be some other little colors in there too i need to zoom in on that one it's there, I swear, I'm not lying. <laughs> yeah, I wanna put a little paint on that pan someday. It's, I need to just get another one is what I need to do. I order enough stuff from Proline at various points, I just need to say, hey, throw a pan in. Well, that means it's semi-consistently producing. That's it. And I mean, we didn't take specifically more pans here than, no. than other locations today. Okay, let's go try the Pennsylvania Gold Hunters. Uh, yeah, now let me show you how to really do this. Thing. His, his, this is his picked location that he thinks is gonna do great here. So. The bigger the rock, the bigger the gold, I'm gonna <laughs> Big rocks, big gold, yeah. That's a nice big rock right there. I put it here myself. The 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 settlers used to ride those babies for miles. <laughs> if anybody gets that reference. Somebody has watched SpongeBob. <laughs> well, right back here in this sandy stuff. You want to see how to stop right there and the leaves are able to stay there? You want it in the leaves? Just shy of it, I think. Well, let's see, which side is this coming from? This way? Here, you can film with this one too if you want. It's filming. Uh, uh. Huh? So we got a big rock. So you that's... got these two blockers here, and like I'd say somewhere maybe. All right, there you go. That looks decent enough to me. The water slows down so much that leaves are actually able to pile up and stay there. So, so we're gonna stay just down, outside yeah. of them. Okay, we're going down a little bit. Come on. I was able to sucker Matt and doing the shoveling, claiming his hip waders are better, even though 
my boots aren't doing much good. Right See that first shovel did? Uh, a ton of sand. It looks blonde and sand. I don't know how good that's gonna be. Probably amazing. It's probably all gold. Oh, I lost my screen. Does that matter? No, it just blacks out eventually. It's oh, the same I got battery. It. It's still filming. If you just touch the screen, it'll pop. Yeah, I got it. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. that's a lot of black sand on that. No, that's loose but upper the, fluff. But, but it's the, the orange stuff that the looks blue good. Or the orange clay. That's something now, I haven't seen. We called that peanut butter uh, when I first started this. The black upper stuff is just the loose sand in this pile. All right. Going for scoop number three. He's <sighs> wrenching on a rock there. I hope I don't break my shovel. That's too short. <sighs> It's those long ones that snap in half. All right, get that guy though. I'm gonna hold this bucket. Uh, can I go for four? Oh, and there goes some of it. That orange stuff is promising. It's the first I've seen of it today. Everything else has looked kind of uniform, but it doesn't mean anything, obviously, because I also got gold out of some of it. You can see the orange coat and stuff. Some sort of slag. It's like pyrite, but it's light aluminum, probably melted aluminum. Just dumping out the gold. <laughs> People got to be driving by like, what the shit are those idiots oh, doing in the creek? Probably think we're trying to get clams or something. I guess I could think we're fishing if it's just real fast. I guess you can still fish these, right? Yeah. Just not for trout. No, that doesn't look like there's any... Wasn't as much of the big heavies. There's a little bit. Yeah. But we know it's not the spot's fault. It's Matt's shovel and yeah. it was piss poor. What do you got? Two ounces? Three ounces? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, don't see anything. Poop. Nothing? Uh -huh. All right. 